<laughs> All right, Ethan. Uh, what I do you got? All right, so rounding it out uh, in line with Pokemon, I want to talk about our opinions on Nintendo. Mm. So when I just talk about Switch here, I just want to get general reflections on how much of your childhood was Nintendo influenced. Because um, I know you know Matt, Evan, and I play a lot of video games. We're really in there. Shows play video games before. She's aware of them. Um, <laughs> I, I think they exist. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a believer. She's, she's on a flat. <laughs> so on it. But I just wanted to know because uh, I, I guess I'll stop the topic. Sure. Um, I was watching this great um, interview with Lauren Landing, the guy who makes the Oddworld games. And uh, he's a really smart dude in the industry, and he's probably one of the most, like, if not successful, like, longevity, like, he has like, the longest yeah. longevity in the games market yeah. as an independent developer. He's not even third party, he's like an independent guy. And Abe's Odyssey, every single generation, oh. pushes narrative, pushes mechanics. Like, it, it, like, listening to this guy talk is fantastic because he's just like trying to get every single ounce of, like, he takes all the money he earns from his games, puts all of it into the development of uh, the next one, so there's some kind of new mechanics, some kind of new thing, moving from 2D graphics to 3D graphics, it's just, it's a great franchise, and it's so weird, because it's so niche, <laughs> that, like, people who hear about it are like, yes, I love Apes Odyssey, and people who, everyone else in the gaming community has no idea what it's about, and anyway, he was, he was on an interview, and he was talking about the Switch, and how he does not, he thinks the Switch is going to perform as well as the Wii U. He thinks that the gimmick of the portable, the gimmick of the thing, is stupid. He thinks getting rid of the, of the portable versus console market for Nintendo is idiotic and combining them together. It's going to kill their sales. He thinks, as a developer, he's not going to develop for it because he was talking about the um, release uh, rules for the Switch mm -hmm. and how essentially Nintendo won't market your game as a third-party developer unless you're exclusive to them and or day and date, which means that you're essentially... You have to release first for Nintendo. Uh -huh. and otherwise, they won't market it. And in fact, there's been proof lately that they bury the titles that are third party that aren't exclusive to Nintendo. Um, also, it, the thing only has like two gigs of RAM. <laughs> so developers have to pair, either develop a really poorly performing, underperforming game for Nintendo's platform and then release on everything else as a garbage thing torn apart by the PC community. Or, alternatively, make a really big game and never have it come to Switch and miss out on the entire Nintendo thing. So he's mm. complaining that because of this, a lot of developers aren't on and that the initial swarm of indie games on the Switch, like Shovel Knight or whatever, are hungry developers, hungry for money, like essentially like hungry for payouts, and had games that were weak enough to run cross-platform. But in the near future, because of a Scorpio coming out and because of the PS4 Pro, and because PCs are getting better every every single day, like what my laptop can run is better than like a desktop five years ago, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, his, his whole thing is that the Switch is gonna not fail, but it's gonna be like between Wii U and GameCube sales. Wait, and, what were the GameCube sales? GameCube sales Horrible. were pretty bad. Horrible. Were they? Yep. Yeah, dude, sad. that's like one of my most nostalgic oh, platforms. And there we go. Oh yeah, that's what, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Is does it matter? So A, I want to say, do you think Nintendo's going to fail again this, like, do the worst again this cycle? And then B, do you think it matters? Well, this has a lot to do with some of the articles you were sending us. Sure. Um, and it's, they're forced, um, they make a um, artificial demand mm -hmm. by limiting supply. And they knew that demand for a Switch was going to be high based on all the PR they had. Yep. And they did. They pulled the exact stunt they pulled with their highly successful um, NES Classic. Yeah. Like, I've been thinking about this the moment you post that, even before I saw those um, articles. But it's just like, it is a scam. It is uh, playing with the consumer because it's gouging prices. Mm -hmm. But it's also screwing them over because there's not enough. <laughs> yeah, it's not enough, and they're not getting paid that much money. They're not getting the scalping prices. They're getting what their MSRP is. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, it, for anyone who's not aware, essentially, uh, Nintendo did uh, their first console at NES. It's a classic. Fantastic games on there. Original Mario, Mega Man, like, all these really great games. And essentially, they released a classic version, which is a bait. It's a little tiny mini version of NES. You it's can a plug-and-play plug console. Exactly, plug-and-play. Like, those are little Atari game things. Yeah, yeah. You can just plug a straight HDMI into your thing. It comes with, like, a controller. You can buy another controller for, like, 20 bucks. And it comes with, like, 50 classic games, uh, all baked into the RAM. Um, and essentially, they were only intentionally releasing a certain amount, and they knew they could gouge the prices up, and they knew that people would be begging for these things. And it and retailers sold out incredibly fast, can keep up demand. People issued the controllers, but the things sold out. The Switch released for like what, three hundred bucks? 
Yeah. How much is it? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's 300 it's right? a fairly, $299. Yeah, it's a fairly cheap console, but they Compares. only... Yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, so technically, it's also the price of your Xbox and what. You could argue it's like two to three consoles, though. What? You, what? Cause like it, yeah, the Switch. Can you? Uh, Dude, honestly, okay, so I gotta say it. <laughs> are you a Switch apologist? No, it's, it's, it's the... A it's Switch the apologist? That's got you. Yeah. I, it's is not it? the experience. Alright, good. Then I want y'all to throw some counter arguments at me and see if I, I still hold water. I I, I was watching uh, one of the interviews he sent us, and as I was watching him break this apart, I was like, this is like some of the shit no. that me and my brothers would have dreamed up when the we were six. The idea behind it is phenomenal. Yes, yes. that's the what I'm saying. The execution was terrible. Well, yeah. How do you figure? Um, the console itself yes. is so cheaply made. I understand why so, they have to do that. There's, I should have said more. There's video after video after video of people putting their console in the dock to play as a, con yeah, as a console. Yeah, the dock that comes with it. Mm -hmm. to, to make it play on the, on the TV. Mm -hmm. Just scratches the screen right up. Just tears yeah. the thing apart. It like melts, like overheats and melts the console inside of it. Cartridges. What? Also, other thing I hate. Cartridges. <laughs> the fact that yeah. Nintendo still uses cartridges. They went back to cartridges? They they've, only, they've always used cartridges, essentially. Uh, except for Wii U. Wii and Wii, Wii U, Wii U used discs. But do you know why GameCube they, used discs. Do you know yeah, why yeah, they right. use cartridges? Anti-piracy. That's yeah. the only thing. They, they yeah. lie and say, it's a portable console. And no. they also lie because it's they were claiming it was um, nostalgia-based, too. Yep. To be fair, like, oh, man, I love cartridges. No, but they're, they're so much faster. Uh, there's some nostalgia No, but there. the, the reason that. why they do it as a business is anti-piracy. Yeah. It's, oh, it's I borderline it. no, I impossible it. to pirate a cartridge while a disc you can just rip that thing right apart. Well, so, I mean, you got your little SD card cartridges you can make. No, sure, sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying that's the reason why they do it, and I guess this gets to my bottom line, uh, and I'll throw this to you guys, is Nintendo survived incredibly long, and not only that, it's, more, it's arguably the most important video game company in the industry, because it saved video games. Like, video yeah. games were dead, they yeah, were gone, yeah, yeah, yeah. like Atari tried dragging it down, and Nintendo, <sighs> Nintendo, the little Italian plumber, managed to save video games, like, permanently, right? <laughs> video games are now, like, a mainstream part of culture, and they're getting cooler and cooler every single day. It's the sexiest industry, it has... Literally, it's the most profitable entertainment industry in the world. Mm -hmm. Like, there are headlines in Forbes in 2009 that are like, is Nintendo the most successful entertainment industry? Like, when you talk about entertainment industries and you go, Warner Brothers, Fox, Paramount, Nintendo, right? They are, they merchandise, you know, Amiibos. Every single kid now <laughs> has some kind of Nintendo. To On my desk, I have a Mega Man toy because, like, they're, you know, I want an Amiibo. Uh, shirts. Everything, right? They control, you know, movies. <laughs> yep. They have all these different things. Now they're moving on the app market space, and like Pokemon Go is a massive success. Nintendo gets a little cut from that. Huge success. It got them a bunch. That's what Nintendo wants: a bunch of money really fast, so they can make their next thing. It's poorly handled. The online service is garbage. It's trash. And uh, but Nintendo still liked it though. <laughs> And, yeah. and, and uh, console-wise, NES, massive success. Literally, like, revived gaming. Yeah. SNES, massive success, push boundaries. N64, the most important leap in console history <laughs> because we went from 2D to 3D. My first real there. console. I mean, people also, like, they, they other people, will mark, like, went to that 3D space before them and they sure. went to the higher bits. I don't think they reached 64, like, 32, like, the Sega Mega Drive and right. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, they straight up skipped 32. Like, yeah, I know. Yeah, and... Uh, it was a very important... Mm -hmm. I say like I'd say the 64 was the jump into modern games. You yeah. have Golden Eye and you have stuff like that, and then Game uh, GameCube. You have just classic like the best Metroid games and some yeah. the mastering of that. Uh, then you have the Wii, which is this weird sensation where old people are playing Wii, they're playing tennis. And you're ignoring their domination of the handheld market. No, for sure. And I was gonna say, and then Wii U was kind of like a really lukewarm, hor I'd say a horrible outing on Nintendo, considering the fact that yeah. that, yeah. that, that could have been their year to take it back. Yeah, with. it made no sense. Mm -hmm. like, no, it wasn't so much uh, PR struggle with it. Did the Wii U come out the same year as uh, the next gen consoles? For... It came out after them, I think. Yeah. Ah, uh, nah. Even worse. That's yeah, what I'm that's what I'm saying. They nah, that, that's even more understandable why mm -hmm. they fell behind. So, so before that, I guess during all of this. Game Boy, you know, Game Boy SP, Game Boy Advance, all of these super successful uh, handhelds, and then the 3DS, well, the DS and the 3DS have just been dominating the handheld market. Uh, so much so that Sony, who's been dominating the console market lately, is literally had to cancel, essentially, their handheld, the Vita. Oh, yeah. Every uh, PSP they've released, every uh, handheld game device Sony's released has lost all support because of Nintendo. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I was one of the dumb suckers that bought the damn PSP Go. Oh, you bought that? I, wow. I got it for Christmas. The, 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 for anyone who doesn't know, the PSP Go is such a bold move, because Sony went, 
everything's gonna be digital soon. <laughs> this thing isn't gonna have a disk drive. Yeah, there's you cannot insert anything to this other than SD card. Yep. So e everything's downloading off of the market. You have your Sony account. You download, and the biggest mistake was. Sony did not have an online marketplace that worked. Yeah. Because that was after the crashes. No, yeah. It was like literally after the big piracy strike that mm -hmm. just destroyed Sony that year. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, I got uh, infamous out of it, but still. Right, exactly. <laughs> they gave you like free games. Yeah. They're like, sorry, guys, you're, all your uh, credit cards are gone, but <laughs> here's some games. Yeah. So, and, and that's another point, too, is although Nintendo dominates handheld, and that's what keeps it afloat despite this really lukewarm consoles with random niche successes but here's my other part of it is from i guess that this is the major crux of the question with this nintendo thing sure uh is the argument of monetary success and cultural success and morality as a company so monetarily nintendo with the wii made a bunch of money right so it won on that front. It just sold a bunch of units. Every single person, you know, there was that joke, the Wii 60, right? Where everyone had a Wii and a 360 during that mm -hmm. generation because you played your you played your little Wii Sports. Everyone had a Wii because it was like 100 yeah, bucks up there. Everyone, yeah. everyone had a Wii because they were mm -hmm. so cheap. No, it was called the Wii 60. And I know you plunge because you're a Sony guy. Yeah, I'm but, a Sony man. But recognize that so PlayStation up until like 2012 was garbage. Yeah. yeah. It was, I, I owned a PS3 I agree. on top of whatever. It was garbage. <laughs> I agree. So it, the pop culture was Wii 60 because Halo 3 had come out. It was so cool. Everyone loved, Xbox was on the top of the game. Gears of War. Or Halo, etc., and then another Wii. So, monetarily, it won. As culture wise, I think Nintendo hurt itself because it what its strongest market was was their mascotting. It was their like they have these brands everyone knows that they're gonna love. So it's like Mario, you know, whatever. And sure, Mario Galaxy was a good innovation, I guess. But otherwise, it's a fun game. Otherwise, like Wonderful. they haven't created any new mascots that people like. Whatever they were just re reiterating, reiterating, reiter reiterating. And um, we kind of saw a dip, like people weren't really big fans of the Wii generation of Smash, people were going to still say on GameCube, etc. And then I guess the last point, so I'm going to wrap this up, um, the cultural win, right? Nintendo, like, Wii, I'm sorry, not cultural, ethics. We only games that came out for Wii pretty much were first-party games. Yeah, and shovelware shovel. and first-party games. There's I can count literally on like three fingers the Hell's good Kitchen for Wii. <laughs> Hell's Kitchen for Wii is a great game. The, the good third party games for Wii are um, Oddworld. No, no, Oddworld. Madworld, but uh, yeah, Chainsaw. Madworld. Yeah, yeah, Madworld, which is a fantastic random third party game. And then No More Heroes, Travis Touchdown, yeah. classic, right? Which we'll, we might get in 2020 <laughs> or whatever for the Switch. But literally, like, there's only a, like a handful of really good third party games and they were not supported they were shoved at the bottom all of them got like a few thousand sales yeah, they're only cult su they successes were, now exactly and people who had them like me or whatever like oh it's awesome whatever but whatever and i'm saying as a console don't you want to push developers up and grow the industry but instead all nintendo does is have their three little companies their in-house companies right they have game freak that make pokemon for handheld for uh, handheld they have their in-house zelda mario team and then they have random, very obscure Japanese, like Suda 51, or they have Splatoon, right? Like, Splatoon was the one for Wii U, right? Yeah. What are the third party games out there for Wii U? And I think that's their market that they're trying to appeal to, because they, they get like the mainstream, non gamer, the, the non gamer people that play video games. Like, that's why they have Mario yeah, Kart, the and all the, just the casual video gamers. I th yeah. I think that's their market and I think that's why they're kind of failing cuz that market's you know not as interested. I think well, that's a not as interested in buying expensive consoles. They right. want the yeah. cheap $60 like we so like, buy like off like used rack, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's great. They got all the games they need on it. They don't need an upgrade. I think that's a great point, Tro, cuz I was just thinking about it. It's like, yeah, I think those games are very universal. Like anyone can just jump on there and start and playing it. it anywhere. And every time Nintendo comes out with a new console, they automatically come out with another um, Mario Kart game. No, yeah. yeah like, Mario Kart 9 coming out soon? Yeah. No, yeah. 8 Deluxe. 8 Deluxe. Yeah, okay. that, that pisses me off, man. Why, why you gotta break it? I, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. But also, Mario Party, Mario... Odyssey sure. is coming out. Yeah. Um, you know for a fact New Smash is coming out. But I'm well, gonna be honest. I'm, right. I'm gonna be honest. The game it launched with alone Zelda. nearly had me. God, Breath of the Wild, I've been yeah. wanting to play it I so sold. bad. I, I, oh, man, I was right there. I, I, I had to really look at my bank everyone account. Everyone was gushing over I, it. I, yeah, everyone was just like, and... everyone was like, it, it, it's remarkable. There's no complaints. I'm just like, <laughs> like I'm tearing up. 
all the way up until their live stream event describing what's all coming with the Switch. I was on the train, mm -hmm. and it just lost me. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, I took like three flights recently, and every single one of them, I've sat next to some like young trendy couple on their Switch, like <laughs> playing, like, to, like they're both either playing or whatever, and I'm like, how did you guys manage to grab these so fast? Because like, they sold out so quickly. Yeah. And I was with you, Matt. I was literally sitting there like, I'm... I'm thinking about buying it. It's such, it's such a cheap console, but as Evan said, there was like five games coming out, and three of them were shovelware. You know, mm -hmm. really, it's Zelda and it's and uh, releases of like old stuff that's been out for years. Exactly, I play shovel on every single console. So yeah. we'll talk about this gift later because obviously there's a lot more here I could ask. Sure. I just wanted to get my opinions out that as a developer, right? Like Steam, Xbox Live Arcade changed the marketplace of yeah. letting any developers get in. And that's why it's like a trillion dollar industry, right? There's yeah. literally hundreds of thousands of people getting hired in this industry to make video games, get their art out. And interactive media is the future of content. And Nintendo is the most, it's representative of Japan. Like it's this walled off island essentially that doesn't let anyone else in, doesn't bring in any Americans, doesn't touch their culture. Like their, their press conference was so indicative of that launching the Switch that it was so Japanese to a fault. It was so weird. And I guess we'll see this E3 coming up this summer. Oh, yeah, that's what's, coming up. What's in store for the Switch? I feel it. I mean, I feel like we're coming close to the end of this podcast. And I there's a few more, a lot more stuff I need to talk about with Nintendo. Yeah, for I mean, sure. It's just something we need to save for a later date. Uh, handheld market is where is their true success. Mm -hmm. uh, it's where they and they, they're, 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 they're dominating it. They're, they're cannibalizing it by... Yeah, by <laughs> releasing the Switch to mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. Uh, just, then uh, I'm yeah. assuming we're like wrapping up here in just a sec. I want to wrap it up because whenever I, uh, we were talking about nostalgia and Nintendo and stuff, there's two main games for me that I always think about, like that build up my childhood mainly. Oh, is it uh, Scooby Doo Night of a Hundred? Yeah, you I nailed it, yes. Shroud. <laughs> I had that PS2. No, no. The, I had that for GameCube. The two. I, Actually, I just. I have GameCube too. I just want to ask, like, what y'all's favorite like nostalgia game was? Uh, I guess just Nintendo for the sake of it. Um, me, it's caught between two. It's Super Mario Sunshine. Okay, good game. Fantastic game. Oh, it's so cute. Absolute oh, yeah. great game. And uh, Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. Really? really? Great game. It's actually a good game. I it is a phenomenal it's game. Sure, the story sure. is amazing in that. Um, mine's, really, I never had it when I was little. I always played at someone else's house. Mm -hmm. But Kirby Air Ride. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude, that game is so fun. So good. I can't tell you how many times I just, I would no, just like. I gotta point out how we're only talking about GameCube games right now. I was gonna say. <laughs> no, game, yeah, it's, it's a thing, the nostalgia I was factor. Metroid Prime. <laughs> yeah, like, hands down. I, I can speedrun that game in like 10 seconds. Part of the reason I got the Wii was because it still played like GameCube yeah. games. I was Definitely. like, cool, I can just play it and like have all in one console. Yeah. Oh, so good. Scooby Doo not have a hundred frights. <laughs> GameCube game. GameCube game. Third party, but GameCube. Yeah. It is third party. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, G GameCube innovation, all those Pokemon Coliseum and weird like games. Dude, wow. Yeah. See, it's all these games that I always go, dude. No, dude. <laughs> you know, it's nostalgia, man. I can just pull out like three games on my pocket and yeah. just blow your mind. Yeah, it's just, you're just you're always just like you light up and you're like, oh, someone actually knows this. Oh, God. Right. Have any of you all heard of like Smash Brothers? <laughs> no. That was a really fun game okay. I right. played. And on that, thank you for listening. Wait, wait, what's yours, Ethan? What? I said Metro Prime. Prime. Oh, I didn't hear you. Okay. And also, though, this isn't an actual Nintendo game. Hmm. Like, well, like it's released on only Nintendo consoles. Mega Man uh, one through six. Yeah, you're a big Mega Man. Me Mega Man's one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, it's just such a perfect game. It's such a deep story. Like, I like people give it credit. Like, it's such a great betrayal story of like. Like, Rock, Rock, which is Mega Man before because Mega Man, wasn't built for combat, which is why he always spares Wily's life, which perpetuates it. And Wily's only evil because him and Dr. Light were partners, and Dr. Light kept getting all the credit, and he's kind of a douche. So Wily got mad, and since he was, he cr basically created and programmed all of Light's robots, Light just created, like, the shell of them. He reprograms all of them to turn evil, essentially, and and that's what you're doing. And that's what I love about the first six Mega Man games, is all the robots you can look at and go, oh... I, like, this is the function they perform for the city, and this is why they got the Nobel Peace Prize, whatever, mm -hmm. is because it's, like, Guts Man's a construction worker, Flame Man's, you know, whatever, Electric Man runs the grid, like, all of them perform functions around the city, and then he reprograms all of them to turn everywhere, and each world's this little... Yeah, you know, it's just such a good... Anyway. Yeah, for sure. It's the, classic Ma design. Mega Man's classic, but I Metro have Prime... I my topic for next <laughs> podcast, anyways. Yeah? I'm excited. All right, hi. All right, well, thanks, everyone, for joining us. Uh, I think that was a really good podcast. Yeah. yeah. It's fun as always. Yeah. 
Um, so that was the third one. Um, be sure to check out the other two. They're up on SoundCloud and YouTube. We'll put the SoundCloud and our Patreon links down below. Uh, one last plug. Um, we are going to be filming some other content soon, and we can use all the support we can get. So if you can um, just make sure you share this content around if you're listening to it. Um, we'd love to hear what you think. Um, comment below for sure. Hit us up on Twitter. Yeah, at follow Cattle us on Pod Twitter. Um, all, we can also hit up us individually as well. We'll put our Twitters in the description. Uh, we'll be back next week with a brand new podcast. And until then, um, when, when I ask the audience a question to like ponder on and discuss in the comments. Like what? I don't know. I think like a good little like discussion thing. Like let's make this a two way two way street. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, we can just say what's your nostalgia game? Yeah, yeah well, I was thinking that's that. Game. Yeah, well, what, what's your nostalgia most nostalgia game as a child? Is Scrappy Doo do in want, set? Do we want to just leave that to game? Nintendo only? Um, I say open it up. Open it. Uh, yeah. 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 What, whatever makes you feel most nostalgic. Yeah. What do you remember best? Your, your, fa- your favorite most nostalgic game in a most nostalgic console. Like yep. what, what games do you have the most uh, memory on? Um, so thanks again for listening and goodbye. Ciao. Adios. Bye. Bye.